All right. Hey there. Uh, this is Jet going over a VOD review from uh, Deceive. That is the Owosa vs. Frost. Um, Mars is POV, who's a DPS player. Looks like he's playing Anna to start out with. Um, I have Xenthoxin here with me to provide a little bit of extra, I don't know, just guidance and sort of just general opinions and any questions that someone might have that I would look over. Um, other than that, uh, this is a marathon of a 2CP Hanamura game. Um, and we're just going to go over it and kind of point out some <laughs> stuff that we have and uh, hopefully get to yell at Zen a whole bunch. So anyway, uh, enjoy our little note-taking session, um, especially for you, Nassif. Um, if you have any other questions about it, feel free to reach out to me personally, and I'd be happy to go over it with this stuff with you as well. Um, to start out with, it uh, looks like they're going to be trying a little bit of a cheeky strat here um, with the Symmetra Teleporter um, and the May walling off the main point is what it looks like. Um, it's really important in this kind of comp to make sure the team isn't aware of what you guys are doing. Um, so the Lucio speed, trying to getting the Symmetra into position and getting that teleport down as fast as possible to get that wall guaranteed um, tick is going to be the most important thing to look for right, here. Let's so let's go ahead and start the video real quick. Um, skip ahead a tiny bit here um, to get them out of spawn, but for the most part it should be, should be pretty basic as far as what they're looking for. And I don't know... Um, Zen, if you guys had practiced this a whole bunch or not, um, we've we've done it in scrims a few times and it works every time the first time. Okay, so I was just kind of wondering about that, but for the most part, you can probably make this full screen too. There we go. Okay, so you guys get teleported down, pretty easy stuff. I don't really know why Mars used sleep there. So this is one thing that I wouldn't have done to start out with if I was Mars, is that you'll notice he's already down, both of his cooldowns. Um, the wall's going to give you guys plenty of time to work with here. And the last thing you want to do, and that, that's already a cooldown gone, right? Symmetra's no TP, she should be throwing up turrets, is kind of the first thing to do when they walk in. Um, but I would like to see his cooldowns still be up, um, especially because this wall's buying you time, right? And it would be really great if you get an anti in on the left door, because um, the, the anti's going to wear off by the time they get in. Right, so now would be a better time to be able to have that cooldown on hand. Um, let's see, right here, it looks like you guys are focusing different things to start out with, which isn't ideal. Obviously, Zarya was shooting something over here. You guys are rotating back. It looks like for the most part, so a little bit yeah. trying to listen to what run, the comms run, are. Run, 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 run. Zarya's so I'm gonna rewind and, and kind of see what the comms were when you guys first started. Wall. Um, let's see what we got here. So let's hear. Wall, walls up. Didn't need that guy. Okay, so the first thing that, that Mars could be doing a lot better is your Ryan's calling shield down, which means that your Zarya should be blowing buddy bubbles on it. You don't really have to worry about May so much in this situation because she's pretty self sustained. Maybe get a free shot if you have time, but with that call shield down, you want to really be focusing the Ryan keeping them up as much as possible. Um, because if you have it if he's discorded, like this guy up there on his little this little ball of death right here. If that goes on the Ryan, they have any kind of focus fire, he's done. Um, so it's not really a bad idea, as I said, to try to make sure we have that buddy bubble ready for Ryan. I don't think he used it yet, except for the very first TP engage. You should have it back by now. Um, once again, if he had his cooldowns, it would be great to be able to have that for the Ryan. Um, but that's just something you guys want to focus on. The whole team should really be helping out to enable your Ryan for the most part. So you lost your Symmetra early, which kind of sucked. Um, and if you guys could maybe as it played a little bit around your ride a little bit more. That would have been ideal. If you had to, this looks like a really scattered engagement from both teams. If you had to, if you guys could have clumped and gone stairs or something like that, um, there's a little staircase that's to the right. If you guys could have clumped on that stairs and really got like a full group to be able to push forward, that, that would have been an option for you guys too. So that's just something to look out for as far as general Anna gameplay goes. Um, I've been sorry, I've been sorry, I've been see, he's focusing. The Ryan was in a lot of trouble. I'm gonna gotta focus too. Would have been a match shape there. So we're calling Zarya, and he shouldn't really be trying to take that 1v1 at all. He needs to be trying to heal his team for the most part, especially because he doesn't have that sleep available anymore. It's okay to go for the sleep, but then you need to focus your team because if they don't have the heals to sustain, they're going to converge on you anyway. So that's just an option right there, and, right, and then he's just kind of in a rough spot. So one thing that Anna could have done a lot differently this fight in general, and what I would have liked to see personally, um, is that your Anna shouldn't be going back Bell. Right, you know that they're going to be pushing through this front door, this side door. You have to think about limiting your angles, right? So you're going to want to be rotating something over to here next to this wall, perhaps, where they have to take either a really, really big flank to get to you, which is okay because that guy's getting taken out of the fight, you know. Uh, but both your supports 
Maybe not Grumpy Kitten so much, maybe playing with the Ryan try to boop him off, because the shield does take a ton of damage on the engage. Uh, if you want to see this Anna going up the stairs, then you don't have those angles anymore. They can't go on the super soft flank or this door, or even see you from the front as it's going. So that's one thing, I like right now would have been a perfect time to back up, and then that Ryan that was also having issues um, could have just backed up a staircase and you guys would have been fine. So that, that's one thing that you really want to keep in mind when you're playing Anna in general, is, is that you want to think about the, the angles that your team, the other team is going to have on you. And if you go back Bell here, the second this wall is gone, they're going to be able to see anything that you can do if you're not staying directly behind it. Then they're going to have a free angle on the left, and then as you see a little bit later, they're going to have that back angle. So he rotates over to here. Um, as I said, the Ryan's discorded, so his shield's going to be toast for the most part. I think Zen is trying to help out the Ryan. Grumpy Kitten should be doing a little bit less Red at Lucio stuff there, helping his Ryan out a little bit more by booping the Zarya away so that she can't just walk at him. And then... As I said, the maze just kind of trying to stay alive, which I'm okay with. But it's kind of, you guys did win the fight, but it ended up being a little sloppy. Um, especially the, tu the turrets ended up helping you guys a decent amount. So, I wish I could see what's going on on, on point still. But um, did you guys end up winning this fight? Doesn't look like it. No, I don't believe so. No, you definitely didn't. So, um, But yeah, those are some things that you could have done a little bit differently that probably would have made you guys win the fight. Because one thing you can do too, as I said, the maze has self-sustained, but if you can play off a secondary may wall to chop their team again, you're just playing the long con with may to sustain fights and try to split them in half, especially the Symmetra. Um, and that's kind of the best weapon that you have in your arsenal, because you're not going to have the raw damage output for it, especially with that junk rat. So I think you guys try the teleporter thing again, up top this time, which is, okay, interesting. And then... Guys, are you right swinging away? I don't like being in scope up here at all because if you're not doing this, is where quick scoping takes a big advantage, right? Because if anything's trying to shoot at you, they, they just like, hey, this Anna's not moving from down low, like this McCree that ended up getting messed up, then your fight's going to be really, really short. I know you did na nade yourself fresh coming in, and I see you guys committed a sound barrier to it. But anyway, so you guys are up here. Jack, Jack has a slam. Can they commit those two walls? Commit wall. So, one thing that I would like to see when we're playing with wall. In, in Symmetra um, in general is to pick a side to play off of so that like your teammates know which side to be on that we're trying to zone the other team from because it kind of creates like it gives like a secondary Ryan shield almost right so if you guys are seeing that the whole team's on the right side make sure you're called doing a call to play left side wall um, or, or, or just however you guys want to do it because if you guys can get your whole team on one side just have this wall of damage that is getting absorbed but from the other team then they can't really do a lot so that's one thing that you should, guys should be calling immediately it's not in your voice comms here no I think we panicked through it because we mm. intended to switch off the sim if it didn't work this time. Mm. I didn't like that nano so much. It wasn't really the start of an engage, but I, I think you guys are just kind of panic ulting in general. That was a bad grab by them as well. But I think they're just trying. That was just to throw your all your ults at the point at the fight kind of thing. So there's one thing I did want to take a quick look at for the most part. Who it is. Okay, so let's just re just rewatch one more time here. Okay. So the second he jumps onto here. Okay, yeah, I, I don't like how. So this is one thing that a lot of Anna's do, and a lot of a lot of players do in general. And we'll just go into a brief concept of, of, of open spaces and cover, right? Is that you see when he when he walked in, he stood right in the middle. Of, of the choke and there's no reason to be there for the most part like if you're just hugging walls in general immediately start getting rid of these angles and what i mean by angles is if you're standing right here in, in this spot is that you're picking your sight line right you're, you're picking ex how far you're extending right and they can't just like be standing like right here and see you right or right here and see you if there's like a mccree doing some weird thing or if they're going for a recontest anyway if you're standing in the middle anyone can see you the guy at the freaking choke all the way out here you know there's that little archway could be seeing you Right, and getting shots on you, and you're just getting, you're inviting yourself for free damage. This Ryan pin, unlucky. That's not really the big, the big deal in the situation here. Um, but your positioning alone would have been able to get rid of that possibility from happening if you just looped around the wall, or even if you're going to be playing up close here for some reason, going into that corner as well to limit your angles too. I don't like that one so much because I can walk in and kind of focus you really easily. Because um, Anna's best friend is space for the most part. She's a pretty decently ranged healer. I said not too worried about this. It happens, but just general positioning stuff and like as a whole, even for DPS characters, start using the concept of, of cover and limiting these these sort of outward angles that you're exposing yourself to. So that's how we could probably get rid of that guy there. Unlucky. Yeah, so they come in. Huge mail, a very important call. So when someone asks, I don't know if you can hear the game comms then, 
Um, I cannot. Okay, so if it, the, so, someone on point, I think it was your tank. I don't remember who. Someone asked if healers were alive, and someone says I am. Say Lucio is or something like that, so they know which heals they're working with. Because you can play a lot differently around Lucio AOE, no amp heals of a payload, essentially, right? You're gonna work a lot differently around that than if you do if you know your Anna's up. So that's one thing that that you guys should work on in general as a team. Is when someone asks, is are the healers alive? If if the answer is yes, identify which ones so that your team knows what to work with and play around it. All right, so. Yeah. Okay, so this this would be a time where it's not really a huge deal because he's really low on ult, but if your Lucio's about the same ult percentage, it takes him a lot longer to build ult, and if you can get a free entire Reinhardt off of Lucio being built, then he, his sound barrier is going to be a lot harder to bring up. Give him the heals for it. The Anna can build ult in you know, 30 seconds if you guys are brawling, so that's something that you can think about as well. Go now, go now, go now. They don't have Lucio, they can't boost. Guys are doing some cheeky teleporter stuff, alright. Okay, so you're brawling. I don't understand the purpose of this wall right here, aside from maybe you guys are trying to use a cover from high ground maybe, but you can also wall high ground completely and they'll give zero value. And you guys can get a little bit more mobility. That way they can they might have to go around to the side of it, but regardless, good job on the personal vault blocking the Rhine. Mew needs to have a little bit better awareness of where the wall's at. Mm, that's unlucky. That is one thing I don't like about that push, is you'll see exactly what happens here, is you're giving up this huge high ground position, and if they're running like a McCree or a Soldier or a Widow, you guys are going to get picked apart. You're kind of playing the tick game here. You're not going to burn down a team of four by the, before these DPS can really start to make some big impact unless you have ults. So that's one thing I would say that I don't really like about this strat. If you do do this teleporter strat, you can kind of goats it. Um, assume that, so, you know, get someone to maybe scout a little bit, see where their team's playing. You see the majority? There's like three on point, like three kind of in this, because you know there's like this little catwalk that goes, that's up that's up here. Um, let's change my color. Um, then you can send your whole team up here and just loop around, force them back down on the point, and give you guys high ground and kind of pick your position a little bit more. Um, that'd be more beneficial than kind of bun rushing point. I understand you're going for the shock factor here, but whatever's going on here needs to not happen because you're zoning yourself from your own team. Because I see, you know, there's Mew and Crow. Oh, that's his team. Sorry. Um, this is Mew, and then I think she was the only one over there. Um, but they're zoning themselves from, especially Mew here, zoning your, zoning yourself from the, your team being able to really help out. So she needs to kind of have a little better awareness on that. That's fine, that's fine. Reset, we... Uh... Okay, I'm not really sure why we... Com so why do we commit grav post post high noon is my question. Or was it like same time? Ryan, 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 burn him. I got... Okay, so yeah, your team's dead for the most part. So you guys are minus two, they're minus two. They have spawn advantage, so that's something to keep in mind as well. It's not a clean fight. Um, so we commit grab after this. And you guys lost both of your healers, to my knowledge. Oh no, you had, you had Lucio still. But that's not really a fight that I would like to see us taking grab for, really. Because it's one of those, it's, like a, it's what I call a catch-up ult, right? where you're trying to catch up to take the advantage back for the most part, especially in something where the walk back from spawn is as long as Hanamura, Volskaya, uh, pretty much all the 2CP maps. So the, the walk back's pretty pretty far from spawn. You're not really going to catch back up, per se, um, by committing this ult so much, is because they're just going to be able to keep trickling out of spawn over and over again. Unless your guys' you know, three to four person focus fire is really rock solid. If you don't get a clean wipe, you're not going to get any ticks out of it. Okay, so do you guys stick with the Symmetra here, or do you switch off? I don't remember. Okay. So what you're kind of seeing, what I was talking about, is you guys got the immediate picks, but then the trickle-outs kind of re-wiped re you for the most part. Yeah. So you want to, that's something you guys really want to keep an eye out for. Um... All right, so you guys go on the Widowmaker, so you can play more of a zo more of more of a distance play. I don't like that you're on the Symmetra still, because she doesn't add very much value to the second point. Her kit's very limited, and there's a lot of long sight lines that she can't really do much with. So I like to see us switch off that. Were they, I'm guessing you guys were holding wall, and trying to split them off point. That's kind of what I'm guessing. Okay, so I'm okay with this positioning. So your Symmetra got pinned out immediately. They committed tire. That's good. Don't commit nano boost, please. There, you commit nano boost. So they're busting out trance right now. So this this would have been a really really good fight for baiting out ults if we just let them. You know that we would have been really really high up in the ult economy for this, but instead we're just trying to keep this trickle going, which they they ended up 
making it work. Ooh, a run right there, nice. And you guys end up winning the fight. So that's one thing that's that's gonna work in plat a decent amount of times, but as I said, you don't really it's so one thing that you could you, you don't really want to do is that's these, these catchable situations, right? Teams that can focus fire, this isn't this stuff's not gonna fly, because you guys are already committing this high ground, right? You're giving it to them, so it's free damage coming in. Right, and you guys didn't get any intro picks. You guys got a tick, which is awesome. That's pretty much a one fight right there. But you start I mean they have the turrets on point, which is kinda cool. Ryan gets an immediate pin. Okay, so that's 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 a four V that's a five V six right there, plus positioning. The Junkrat spams tire pretty much, which you which Zen gets, which is which is huge, you know. Um, but teams that can focus fire, that stuff's just not gonna work for the most part. You know, like once that Ryan's dead, especially if they have someone sitting high ground, like raining down shots, this this pin's like really, really risky. Right, going after this Ana doesn't provide any value for this pin right here. So like, essentially this is what's gonna happen: is you got this guy standing here. Here's my professionally drawn hit scan. <laughs> okay, is he's gonna see this Ryan go free? Right, that means that nothing. Zen's no longer free from their main line, right? And if you look at this, semi high energy Zarya, right? And then you got Junkrat, no big deal. Ana just trying to figure out what the fuck's going on at this point. Gets a big sleep on the Ryan. You're no longer enabling your Zarya to make any plays here. Right, this is just a generic pin to try to hopefully get an Ana. That's what I call prayer pin, because the fight's pretty much. I mean, listen, this guy is doing off whatever he's doing over here, having a great old time. With Lucio, which should be with kind of your Ana. Look how low they are. I don't really agree with Lucio doing this stuff. It's, it's what we call the Reddit Lucio stuff. Um, they should be playing off your Ana, playing off your backline um, to try to help enable, you know, keep the AOE heals alive. This doesn't really provide a lot of value for you. So you get get your miracle pin here. Anyone that's up here, they're gonna shoot directly down. On this Ryan and melt them, right? Or Zen and melt them. And, and you don't have your front line anymore either. So the Zarya can focus, his Discord orbs on you, then you're dead. Zen's gone. In a heartbeat, right? Did it work against Frost? Yeah, yeah sure, it might. This is one of those fights that shouldn't have happened, to be honest with you. There's a lot of really, really minor mistakes that add up to one big mistake, right? Behold Shield. Got a got a Anna that's in a pretty good spot, right? I would like to see the Anna playing a little bit closer to this wall, so that if there isn't someone up there that's paying attention, um, then they are cut off from all this being able to see him, um, or closer to this wall, if there is someone up top that would easily be able to prioritize him. But as I said, Zen's Discord right here, no front shield, Zarya, if they can track, done. You know, as I said, if there's someone up here, Zarya's toast. You know, this is a, this is a really, really bad pin by your Ryan. You're kind of just throwing all your eggs in one basket, being like, I hope I pin a support. It works out, because we overcommit an ammo boost, that really shouldn't work out. Um, but it's kind of one of those things. I mean, you know, do you want the tools to, like, have it sometimes work out? Occasionally, or do you want the tools to be able to like bait out ults this fight? You know, because you guys are immediately down people. You know, we had a good, like, you know, and okay counter charge on Jag there. Um, but for the most part, like, we're committing a ton of ults where they should have been able to focus down fire pretty easily. So, it's a good anti on the junk. And then there's the person up top that I was talking about. If they focus fired, Zenny would have been toast. So, but overall, then Jag comes out of spawn, tries to do the charge thing, works out well. And then I don't really know why there's there's Zarya was holding grab I guess but I don't really understand the concept of holding these these holds if you're not gonna make it back to point so they should have they should have made the switches to help stall a little bit better all right so that's the end of round one is there anything that you had personal comments Zen about um we we tend to get pretty scattered once it gets to the actual brawling yeah I so we we don't really worry about the high ground or everything else we we just kind of mm -hmm. survive and brawl it out. Yeah, and I know so. that you guys are actually... I've watched a few of your games, you guys are really good at brawling. I will say that once it gets down to the brawling, like, if another team tries to kind of throws the the game sense stuff out the window, and it comes down to just, like, a shit show, you guys tend to come out on top a lot. Um, so let's right. see here. What was the next, next timestamp for this guy? Let's see here, 10.55. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll up to here. All right, so what we're running here is this... Kind of like a little goat's comp with Genji, a little tiny bit. Um, so you got the AOE heals for the most part. This should be a death ball for the most part, even to see. Um, you guys should all be kind of working out his walls and death ball for the most part. While Mars is kind of, he's going to be your high ground patroller for the most part. And one thing that Mars is going to have to look out for when playing on defense, this is AOE, right? That he's not really going to have anyone that can really rush heals to him very quickly. So he's going to be really, really self sufficient in that aspect. So let's see how the defense goes for you. Was there anything that you guys know that you did really, really poorly on defense? Or do you not remember? This is an older game. I think we just fell apart once they ran the Pharah. Yeah, yeah. I would say that you guys did struggle with the Pharah a bit because I think I did watch this before. Now, 
Zen, try to be careful about the mid to late fight. I don't really understand why your Ryan's not getting a fire strike off the break. Very odd. So there's the pharmacy. Your Gen your Genji did call pharmacy, so that's good. Um, I would like to see how your healers rotate to it. Okay, so not too bad. There we go. Now I can hear you. Mm -hmm. They're gonna push now. I think we expected them to the goats, and they yeah. switched up. They ran the Pharaoh, fire. which was which was interesting. Okay, so let's kind of see how this fight fell apart. It's hard to tell from a Genji POV because a lot of time they're trying to do their own thing a little bit. Okay, so after this wall, they're gonna hit. They're gonna hit you with a hard engage, which you guys should be playing a little. When your wall gets nothing, that's a cooldown gone, right? So you guys kind of want to back up a little bit and play more towards wall, especially with Farah. You want to play more towards wall in this corner so that she doesn't get a lot of free damage into you while the team's just walking at you. You guys have to burn a lot. Um, so let's go ahead and keep going. So here comes a hard engage. I don't really like where your Genji's standing for the most part. I would like to see him like high ground somewhere, getting because you don't want to be part of the frontline engagement because he, there's going to be a lot of damage coming in on your Rhine and on your on your Zarya for the most part and you're going to want to wait a hair until the Genji or until the fight started right otherwise you're going to be in the brunt of that damage i know Mars survives Mars good Genji um but you're you're going to want to be trying to avoid this giant burst of damage is going to be especially with a wall coming down they're going to be panicked they're going to be like oh shoot you know like this this may cooldown's done let's hit them hard so they, they don't get another and, and wall us off again. So you don't really want to be standing here. Off to the side, even a little bit farther back would be good. Um, I understand what you're trying to do, maybe block a fire strike. So that's, that's good. I understand that. But you can do that after it gets through your Ryan, too. It doesn't have to, you don't have to be like in his face, in his face. So deflect that. I think he's trying to focus the Genji. I would like to see him maybe focus the Ana. Yeah, you guys just got bursted down by the heels, honestly. Any heels on point? Out. Okay, so this is a good wall. This is a good wall right here, and unfortunately they have a lot of mobility, so that creates that creates an issue for you guys right there. Um, but you guys could have done like a little bit cleaner of a pull back to point. You know, you guys could kind of get shit showed. You know, even fall back to the choke and try to go for a recontest and be okay. You don't have anything to counter the Pharaoh, which creates an issue. Um, but your team did kind of get melted through there, so not really a ton that you can do. But you could have made it a little bit more of a fight. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, don't play to touch, don't play to touch me. Yeah, so this is where you should be playing to farm ults, and not stagger a ton. Mars should just be dying on point, honestly. This is a big risk for being staggered, if they do decide to chase you with one of their more mobile people. But, that's a working out just fine. Fuck, I missed my shots. Faro's coming, right side. I see you. I don't see you. Yeah, I got you up. So we made a switch on to Widow, still running the Genji. I wish I could see where their where their widow is where your widow is standing for the most part. Okay, so this should be a decent horse. Well, do you have any idea where your widow is standing? Maybe top left. I'm guessing that's the only place. So I like this play. Get on the Anna, make her make her worry about you. You don't have to secure a kill so much, which she does anyway. It looks like very nice. So why did why did we commit sound barrier? Do you have any idea? Just because they were coming in. That's what I assume. So I think it wasn't engaged. So we're committing, we're committing coalescence. Okay. The health pools look decent up there. They blade, okay. So commit blade, that's good. Nice. So I don't like this part right here. This is the one thing I don't really like Mars doing. Is that he, you guys are calling out Zarya, but they start focusing on a damage boosted Pharah. As Genji, just get the Zarya out of the picture first. Get your dash reset, especially, so you can dash her after you're done. And maybe actually provide some real damage as opposed to hoping you hit six shurikens to kill her. Because um, you even you, you ping the Zarya, and so you're gonna get that dash reset. That, that should be your primary focus. Is burn that Zarya down that has high energy. Because if you don't, that's gonna be a she's gonna farm grab a little bit off your Ryan or someone that's standing there. So that's the last thing we want. Mercy, Mercy, Mercy with the big plays, all right. I think I got stopped the recording. I can't remember. Really Five hundred. Okay, so you guys are gonna commit, gonna grab, grab blade. I'm guessing. Hopefully. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Um. So why? I think. 
I think cool. we kept the Genji because he already had Blade. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't hate the Genji against this comp. It does it does provide limited utility against the Pharah, but it does provide pretty good utility against the um, against the Ana and other other things. Um, right. I don't like that you guys aren't scout up scouting anything. Uh, like holding like maybe looking through the doors or anything to see when they're coming in and get some free damage. Your Zarya especially could be shoot just just badgering right clicks through mid. You see they're going through mid too, you can provide like a top down location to drop directly on them and it provides limited access for the fair to just fly in too. So something you can think about is, you know, holding up here and just, just annoying them as they come out of spawn. Cause like okay, let me see if I can draw this out. Um we all know of the choke that's like the main choke that's on first point, right? It's like kind of right here-ish. Looks about yay so, right? Yeah. If you're just popping right clicks after you get a team wipe into it, you're going to build some decent ult charge, right? And you're going to see them, if they start looping this way, they're obviously going mid. You know, start looping around outside, they're obviously going to high side. You get, you get time to make these rotations if you really do want to hold up here, but you also limit them having that free space to work with where they could they could set up anywhere in this entire map area. And you have no idea until they're, until they're starting their engage if you guys are hanging out up here. So that's just one thing that you should have a person doing. Genji would be good. Zarya would be good if you do want to hold your team top left, you know. That would just provide you a little bit more ult charge with when you're fighting for percents. You know, how many times have you, how many times have you been in a fight and you're like, oh shit, I'm 2% to trance, you know, or I'm 2% to grab or something like that. And then right. you guys end up losing because of it. If you're fighting for every little ounce of ult charge, then that will end up being you. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, all right. Let's see what we got. Yeah, they're all going main. They're all grab going main. Them on the bridge. Grab them on the bridge on is a good bridge. call. Okay, so if we're grabbing them on the bridge, I would like to see our Ryan drop immediately because that means you're going to commit. You're going to commit that grab. Like you, that, you're going to commit that grab, right? You're you're calling it. So I would like to see the Ryan drop immediately to help swing into it a little bit and provide some damage. Just in case something like this were to happen, it would have worked out. Yeah, so you guys didn't follow up your Genji nearly enough there, and a team that had, you know, a little bit more burst healing perhaps, or, you know, because one thing that, okay, this is one thing that we can do a little bit better in, in general, is if you get some intro damage in right before this, then there you can blow through Zarya bubble before the grab, and if they don't have those personal bubbles, it's 400 free HP they don't have. So it's kind of like you're almost negating some healing that way. Waiting until they blow bubbles wouldn't be too bad of an idea. Because they can't really... I know you're... I'm assuming you're trying to get the Pharah early so they don't fly and create a ruckus. Um, but if you do wait like a split second longer than until they blow those personal bubbles, then it wouldn't be too bad of an idea. So goes in right here. As I said, you want your Rhine to be dropped and swinging at this. If you can commit them to Shatter, perfect. You know, that, that's great. Or something like that. If you can get them to bait out ults by being over aggressive and they think they can win, perfect. You know, but if your Ryan drops and swings into this, they can provide a lot more value and clean up what Mars is doing. Because there are two swings at 75, or uh, was it 50 or 75? I can't remember. I think it's 75. Two swings at 75 yeah. apiece. That's a ton of damage to this group, and that makes Mars' dashes that much easier. You guys could just have gotten a clean team wipe. So. And a fire strike. Yeah. So, just a little bit earlier. I know the Ryan did drop eventually, but a little bit earlier, none of this would have had to happen, right? These people don't get out. And then he could have made that. He could have put that on his montage, which is way more good important job, good at the end of the day. So we want to make sure we give our Genji a little bit more support. Do they have their grab here? Do they have their blade here? They don't have blade. They they might be at like 60. I didn't realize the colorblind settings changes the on fire color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right right about now is when I'd probably like to see your Widow committing sites. For the most part, that's because they're starting their pre-engage. If you guys aren't going to scout, then using it early like that would help a lot, so you could you could kind of pre-stage where they're coming from, right? Yeah. Especially when you're behind in ults, that's big, because it, it, it'll slow them down a little bit. Your teams always play slower when you pop Widow sites because they don't want to peak corners, and you guys can kind of catch back up in the ult economy because you just committed some and they committed zero, right? So it, it just provides that extra, I think walls is 15 seconds, I want to say, maybe 20? I believe so. Somewhere around there. Uh, but it just provides you that little bit extra space to work with and a little bit extra time to maybe regen that those alts that you kind of just got to committing. So just something to think about when you're when you're having Widow Sights. It's like right now, you would have that wouldn't have been a surprise. There we go. So this wouldn't have been a surprise to you guys. Like none of this would have been kind of last person. I no idea what your Lucio is doing, by the way. I don't know what this is. Um, unless he's scouting, I hope. Um, or he's just going on Gr Lucio's grand adventure for the most part. I don't like that the Genji's playing shield. To be honest with you, I, I don't like the Genji playing shield at all. 
Um, because I said, they're just taking this incoming damage and just for no reason. He could be out scouting, you know, so getting left clicks, farming blade. This Ryan's completely disconnected. He could have gotten shots on Anna, could have gotten shots on Zarya. I don't even know who the hell this is. Um, but could just be off doing a lot more things. And with his mobility, he can get back a lot easier. So he doesn't need to be playing behind shield the entire time. And if you're scouting, then you're providing a lot more value than just standing behind shield waiting to get like kind of a green light. Because what's what's his best play? Like realistically, what's the Genji's best play here, right? He did. They have the pharmacy, which you know of, and they come through here, maybe you can kind of harass them a little bit, but it's going to be people running across bridges that you dive on, right? Probably go after this Anna or something along those lines, but up here doesn't provide you any value. You have to use a movement ability to get there, and that's one thing that a lot of DPS um, and a lot of tank players don't do very well, is they, they struggle with this concept of, of saving their movement abilities whenever possible. You can just hang out here, here. Or they're just kind of this general bridge, or, or here, that window kind of to the left. You could drop on whoever and save your movement ability for actually on the end gauge or getting out. Getting out's the big one that a lot of people don't think of. If things don't go well, you show up on this Anna and she gets a, a nasty sleep on you and doesn't know the combo, then you can hold your you know your shift to get out. But anyway, long story short is that Genji could be doing a lot more here in general with with sort of his his positioning and and as I said, his ability to scout and use his movement to your advantage. Um, and he just doesn't provide any value here. So just a limited actual application to anything for his team. So one thing I would like to see change is the Genji be a little more proactive with what he's doing. Oh, so that's their Genji that was over there going with the Pharaoh. Okay, so doing a, they're doing a split thing. So he's got gonna go after the Ana, which is good. Big, okay, perfect. That's unlucky. That was about his only play. Not not much you can do there. Was that a symmetric? No, that's, they're on the widow. Okay. Um, so let's see. You guys knew they were going to commit. Hang on, so let's, let's see how let's see how we could have changed this fight a little bit. The Genji did perfect. So you guys are dropping here. You guys know they're going to commit. Um, you guys know they're going to commit the grab. Uh, the grab rush. So this is where it's really important to keep the one thing that can your win condition in this situation is going to be to see headshotting that because you guys don't have a defensive ult. That can really get through Grab Barrage, because um, I believe your Lucio used his beat in the last fight. So you want to keep Nassif clear. So this is this is kind of where it would have been a lot better idea for Nassif to be running with the shield, perhaps, or, or down low down here at the bottom of the stairs for an easy peel, um, instead of kind of over in this general area. And so using sites in the pre-engage would have been a lot better for that, because he could have played around where their team was looking to push and stayed separated. Also a really underutilized place, I would say, is uh, this area up here in general. I really like hanging out up there for the most part with more mobile healers, not so much with your comp. Um, but as I said, you need to keep this was kind of your MVP. This was your this was your quote unquote counter, right? To this this grab barrage situation. So he had to he had to stay uncontested, but they had, the Genji got through free. So he needs to pick his better his positioning better. You need to play around him better. It's okay to commit the Rhine's Aria to it. Um, especially getting their Anna first, that's big. Um, but he needs to do a better job of having some better spacing as you're either right here, um, stay away from Farah shots, or even just even just hide a little bit until the Farah, until you know they're gonna pop it, because they're gonna be eager. That's the thing that's a lot of these lower ranks, they're eager to, you know, they see him, they're like, oh shoot, we're gonna get three, it's gonna be huge, you know, we wanna pop this shit ASAP. So, um, that's something you guys could've done a little bit differently there. Uh, it, it does, it does sort of create an issue, I guess you could say, um, when you're putting all your eggs into that basket. Um, it would've been a little bit nicer if you guys would've played a little bit more around, like, either the top an overbridge area. Um, I said with those pre that with that scouting, it would have been huge. You know, if you would have saw three in main, you guys could have dropped main, killed the whole team, and then they would have had the they wouldn't have been able to be in position for this. But you guys are already there, so that's where that's where the scouting thing comes into play a little bit more. Is you can adjust your team rotations around where they're going to be coming in. I think if the widow was on the bottom of the stairs, he might have been able to pick the pharaoh or the mercy on their way in too. Yeah, and he might have just missed shots. You know, it's entirely possible, and got zoned by the rockets or something like that. But that was kind of your guys' big, big play there. Right, you have the I said, where, where the widow's at right now too. You guys, she could have been playing the whole time. If we scout. That's the thing. Is we got to scout, see where they're engaging, and we can, we can kind of move our team around it so we're not just forcing these fights onto point last second. You know, it's a lot of stuff that you can do in the pregame. As I said, Genji's big for it. You know, Widow's Widow's good for it to try to get opening picks. That's why you always see a lot of good quality Widow players standing trying to get these free shots. You know, and that's why I said use those sites probably about five seconds before you think they're going to be trying to engage. Maybe not a little bit earlier, so you kind of get the heads up, and rebuild your ult economy a little bit. So doing that, Widow's done. Genji doesn't have a ton of plays here. I like that. One at a time is a big concept here. Mars is doing a really good job of it. 
So you kind of committed I'm down, I'm down. when you had to. Space Mew's done. Grumpy Kitten dies, yeah. And they're going to commit ults to focus down. Not a lot he can do there. Doing a really good job delaying, actually. Yeah, he doesn't really have a play. Sucks. He was he was kind of done anyways. Okay. Especially when like. So do you see a little bit, a couple more different things you guys could have done a little bit better um, on the defense of that that point there that could have maybe turned the tide a little bit? Hello, Mr. Zen. You dead? Oh, I didn't know you were asking me. Yeah, I was asking you. I mean, do you, do you kind of see some of the the rotational things that you guys can do and the benefit of scouting so far in advance? Oh, absolutely. Okay, good, good, good. Just want to make sure that's getting through. Oh, yeah, it makes sense to me. 17, um, 14. Do you have any questions about anything so far? I'm just kind of tearing through it, I know. I'm trying to be as thorough as possible. Um, do you think we should have switched off of the Genji? After yeah. After we committed I, Blade? Because the way they were brawling was kind of so spread. So yeah. Unless we like, grab Blade, I don't think we were going to get anything out of it. Genji's playing Assassin role at that point. Um, as I said, he was doing a really good job contesting the Ana. Um, I yeah, think, he was. Yeah, I think I think you guys would have been fine with the Genji. I don't think it was the the major problem. I would say. Um, I don't really like the Moira so much with the, when they have grab combos like that. When they're going with the big grab combos, I don't like the Death Ball healer comps, which is you know Ryan Zarya, Lucio, Moira, all AOE stuff for the most part. I don't like those because it forces your team to play condensed. And what do grab combos like to have is people condensed. So, right. and then your Widow's kind of off and can't really get peels. I don't like the Genji with the combo either because he can't really. He's going to be playing an assassin role, right? Not really playing with the Brawl, but you guys don't have a Discord. So you can't Discord Nana in the back line, and he can't go hunt it down, for instance. So, um, And also your Widow is just going to be really struggling with any kind of heals in general. There's not a ton of health kits and safe places on that map. So um, those are some things that I would do differently. Can you make it work? Yeah, absolutely. But I think you could have got more value, um, even if a Soldier 76, if you're going to Death Ball it, just so you can be more self-sufficient. Wouldn't be too bad, and you don't see a lot of Soldier anymore. Um, yeah. Ash would have been great there. Having that extra bob to be able to throw in and just cause disruption on the front line would have been really, really good. Um, yeah, and then ha awesome. and then having the dynamite when they won because you saw them coming through main multiple times would have been really good as well. So I think Ash probably would have been the pick there to switch to. Um, I don't. I think Tracer kind of would have had the same problem that Genji does, but have a little bit more self sustain. Um, I don't like non self sustain characters with major AOE heals. Uh, so here we are, seventeen eleven. We're moving into your second round defense. Um, so after they push through, so we'll see what they can do for you. So it looks like you're running Renzaria, Ash, McCree. So you're going to double hit scan. Still on the Moira Lucio. So the McCree's going to have to play a little bit closer to the tank line to get take advantage of these AoE heals or play off a health kit. So that's where that's where Nasif has got to immediately be Mr. High Ground Patrol because McCree can't really do it with his limited mobility or heals. She's got to be able to use Coach Gun to get back into the healer's lines, essentially. So they're running a Widow. They got the they're still on, they're on Widow Pharmacy. For the DPS yeah. line? Okay. Totally okay, so I'm, I'm okay with this position. That's that's a tough shot right there. I don't like how far forward he is with no... So the, the call is there's a Widow. That was a lot of risk right there, if they have a Widow that can hit shots. They have no shield or anything. So for a very limited value, mind you. So, just, you know, so that right there is where it would be nice to McCree and Ash could have got that. Okay, so this is where you guys got to pick, okay, and this is this is where you guys have, have to pick, okay? You guys can't half-ass this, and it looks like you guys are starting to, okay? If they're going to set a pharmacy behind, that is a 4v6 that you guys have to commit to in, in choke, yep. or you're going to commit to a full reset onto point and playoff point and try to take care of both at the same time. There is no half, because the second this Pharaoh's over here, behind, if they're pharmacy. decent, no heals, have... mind you, that Pharah is going to be on that rooftop, popping over right now, trying to shoot everyone on your team in the rear for a ton of damage. So you guys have to go in hard or not go at all. And you guys are cho choosing to go in, so you guys have to finish this and wipe it, or it's going to be a nightmare. See, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. So you're opening up a giant array of damage into your back line. You guys don't have time to play around on this anymore. No poke at the choke. The second there's that big of a team, that much of the team behind you, commit. You know, it's much better to give up a tick, even if they go to point, give up the tick, wipe their team, go back and kill them and fight, live to fight another day. You know, that's things that a lot of people I don't feel like understand is the concept of giving up ticks is okay. So you guys have three plays here. I'll tell you what the three plays were, is that the second you saw this pharmacy go behind, they were low. Okay, your main your main play is, as I said, 
Aggressive play would have been hard engage. Fast. Though you have a Lucio, so you have a speed boost, so that's fine. So you guys can just run it out of they have a widow. No big deal. You know? Send your tanks in, overwhelm with damage. That stun was huge. That that uh Mars did. You guys should be able to capitalize on it. Anyway, that so that's what would have been ideal is you guys go and wipe them. Okay. Let's say you guys are low on HP and you guys want to back up. Playing on this choke behind Mars right now. And just doing a clean reset and letting giving them point and trying to recontest it that way would have been an option. Um, you guys have the Ash and the McCree, so the pharmacy is not really a big deal. If you guys both, if the hit scan are focusing that target, you guys can play it slow. You know, give give the hit scan some high ground, um, or you guys could have just backed up your whole team and played off point and then tried to do a double angle thing, or maybe even play back here a little bit. But give them all this space in the world, also an option. But what you did was kind of the worst thing you could have done, honestly, because it opened up your backline to getting shot a ton by a damage boosted Pharah. Which is going to melt you guys in a heartbeat. And then the second they see that, they're going to push in and you guys are wiped. So. Do we call out that Pharmacy went behind? Yeah, you guys do. So I'll, I'll show you when you guys call it out, just just for ref just, for, just for your reference. Um, let's see, let's do, where are we at? If the thing wants to load. Here, here we are. Alright. Up top, up top, up top, up top. Straight ahead. So I don't like what he's doing either. Is your your Ryan right here? Because he called he, they called. I'm backing up to um, rebuild my shield, and Mars continued to go right into the open. And any team, if they have a Zenyatta, especially that's that's the thing you gotta watch out for. Is a Zenyatta or any kind of like widow sniper character, they would kill him immediately, and that'd be a huge hit to you guys and it's very very avoidable by just that's kind of disrespecting the enemy team to a certain extent where you're just like i'm in plat they're in plat they're not gonna hit the shot you know what i mean right. and it's just something that's really really avoidable because guess what you start hitting masters and they hit the shot and you guys are done yeah so, when he looks to the left and all of the team is over there yeah exactly so that's something to watch out for like that widow they won't miss the higher rank you go so right now they call it the sieve calls far as in far low and then pharmacy behind right now this okay. is this is your this is the time where you guys need to go. Mars plays it correctly. Lucio, I don't think speed boosted, which is odd, but you guys need to go in and commit to that. So, and then that kind of happens there. I'm assuming you guys lose this fight. Deserve to lose this fight. Mars is doing about everything he can. Yeah. So there's not really a lot you guys can do there. Playing to build ults. Alright. So they played that really well. The other team did. I'll give them credit for that. I think Jag went off the map, didn't he? I believe so. <laughs> what a fucking legend. Doesn't need doesn't want to be on the map, doesn't need to be on the map. For two minutes, so let's try to win this one with just Bob. Maybe coalescence if we need it. And then next fight with Grav and we'll be alright. Okay, so right, uh, Nasif called out, um, there's only two minutes left, so let's try to stagger our ults. Let's try to win this one with Bob and Maybe coalescence, and then we can commit uh, grab and something else. I don't know what we said. I'm gonna try to boop them off. So that, that's the call. So this is the same situation, right? Because of no scouting. Now you guys have less scouted characters, I'll say. Um, but it wouldn't be too bad an idea to have, to have the Ash just looking, seeing what's going on, you know? Because she can immediately, if anything gets crazy, she immediately pops up and can coach gun up here. That's a pretty safe spot for the most part, especially with the McCree getting cross damage on. They don't really have a lot of mobile stuff to go get her. So. Far right side. I was gonna say we were probably afraid of the the widow that they have now. Mm -hmm. but we didn't scout last round either, yeah, so probably yeah. not. Yeah. It's also, I mean, it, it, that is important to note that the widow, you know, could be could be there, but you need to know where the widow is at too, so they don't just show up somewhere and kill you, yeah. half your team. So if they're peaking main or something, it's good to know that information. I'll see you guys that give them just a free walk onto point. I have no idea where they came from. I'm guessing mid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. force them to commit. Force them. Yeah, so they just let him walk over mid again. No big deal. What is, what is your Lucio doing? Did he jump down? Yeah, so why does your Lucio keep doing this? Do you have any idea? It's the second time I've seen it. No, uh, might have been going for a boop off the bridge. Okay. So I'm trying to. I'm just trying to figure out. So they're just trying to slow down the person coming up a little bit. I don't really. It takes your Lucio out of the fight for a while. Um, but I don't really know what they, where they go from there. It's a really easy target focus. If they just turn and look at him, he's dead. Yeah. So don't like what your what your Lucio is doing there. Um, I would like to see that stop, ideally. They're 
Yeah, because our Moira is actually less than half. Right yeah, now. so your Widow shows up top right. That's kind of what I was worried was going to happen, is that that's where your Widow is going to show up. Um, that's where I would have kind of like, as I said, I like playing up here with your hit scan a lot of the time, especially if you're going to run, if you run your main tanks up here, that's cool. You run your, make them, give, give them a little bit of, con something to contest, you know, a little bit. Make them, make them work for it, to a certain extent. So, but that's just gonna, that's free reign. Now, Widow's McCree, yeah, that's, that's a tough fight for a McCree to take, honestly. Yeah. Got a good angle on it. Yeah, I don't like that Nasif dropped with Ash either. I don't really know why he did that, to be honest with you. Do you have any, did, did you, do you have any idea? I can't hear the comms. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Because I think you said we need to get to point, point, point. That should be a Ryan Zarya drop. Bob is in there. Oh, so he looped around bottom right. Okay. So he was looking for Bob. So he's looking for Bob, which is fine. But he does go on to point, which I think is a little silly. I'm going to trust his judgment in the middle of the fight. Um, because ideally, McCree could be should be just playing for. So, okay, so this is gonna be something. How do I explain this? Um, let me try to explain this a little bit. So when McCree sees this, your job is to just annoy the widow. You're not gonna win this fight, especially at higher ranks. They're, McCree's a super easy target to hit. Uh, your goal is to prolong this fight as long as possible. Make it as slow as possible so you can just distract this widow for as much time as you possibly can, so that they can't click on the rest of your team. Because that's a free sideline. Like McCree dies here. The widow has free reign over this entire point, right? Like she's nothing, nothing really to contest her for the most part, except yeah. for the ash. So the McCree's job here is to call out that there's a widow top right, call he needs help, and that the ash needs to start looking for a cross shot to just hopefully try to annoy him, or he needs to get super, super ballsy and try to like do a jump off there and try to do something. You know, maybe get a stun in or something like that, close the distance a little bit. I don't like that play so much. Stalling would probably be the ideal thing. You know, the, the Widow has a good shot. There's not, not a lot you can do about that, but we probably could have prolonged it a little bit longer and, and gotten a little bit more help from our from our, our team on that one. Oops, where'd it go? Oh, where'd we I just lost everything. Uh-oh. We're clicking on Did we call stuff. the Widow on top? What's that? Did we call the Widow out? Yeah, you called him on main, um, which is okay. So this is where you guys were at here. Uh, that's where they were at there. Let's see here. Let's see here. Because they were... Yeah, they're in the middle of this. The, no, no, no. Yeah, so you're a little bit farther after that. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to click on the dang thing. Okay, so this is right after he died. And that's right after the widow got done killing the thief. So let's continue on. Kills Azaria. Not a lot you can do there. Yeah, I would have. So this is one thing I don't like either. Is I think McCree's a terrible stall pick. I understand you're trying to hold noon, but Widow's got such an easy shot on it. I've just given it up, and I would have probably gone Wrecking Ball or Tracer. Tracer would have been really good for trying to contest that back line. Wrecking Ball's super good for trying to contest that back line, um, and just get some kind of pressure on that Widow for the most part. That should have kind of been the priority. Because right now, I mean, McCree doesn't have any self sustain. Right, he might get the Pharah, Widow's going to have free shots. I do, yeah, this is doing exactly what should happen. But I don't think McCree's the answer here. And you guys need to... This is... Give up ults. It's okay to give up ults that aren't going to add a ton of value to your stall to make sure you avoid losing... Or you make sure you avoid losing the game. Right? Because those ults aren't going to do you any good if you guys end up losing the round. So I would have liked to see him switch to a stall character that made Tracer or Pharah's life a little harder. Soldier's okay. You know, he's fast. He's got uh, healing things. Um, and that probably would have been a better option. Than staying on this McCree over and over again. Yeah, so not a lot he can do here. Press Q, hope for the best. Probably what I would have done. Not like it's gonna make a difference. Yeah. So a little May would have been really, really good there for the for the walls and the ice blocks. You guys can probably burn another 20, 30 seconds. If 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 he's able to delay those two times, it's probably a good 20, 30 seconds off the clock. You gotta remember those 20 and 30 second bunches add up pretty quick. You know, that's a fight every time. Okay, so next next point. Was it 21, 21? Okay. Okay, so you guys are running triple dive tank, Mercy, Zen, Genji. So what you're going to be looking to do is try to discord a target and I'll attack it. I'm guessing you're trying to use the D.Va to try to mitigate this Pharmacy or Widow for the most part. And sort of use your Genji as uh, a healer distraction for the most part. That's my guess. Kind of what you're going to be trying to do here. Right. They have, uh, they have on high ground. We're going to have to go on Bastion together. 
Okay, Arissa Bastion on high ground. I'm not a huge fan of trying to run this it. comp into it, but no it can work. Wall, no may wall. No may wall. Yep, I'll call it. Go for main. Go for main. Three, okay. two, one, now. Nice. You guys, you actually performed that really well. Dove on the Bastion and made sure you got rid of that. Mercy Res, Mercy Res. Mercy Res. Yeah, we need to protect the Reses a little bit more. Take space a little bit better. So how did you guys end up even that? Because you guys, you guys engaged that perfectly. Did you guys not focus the same targets? It's my best guess. Likely. Okay, so they have a May that's holding up there. So you guys, you guys engage this really, really well timed, to be honest with you. I didn't expect you guys to do that. Okay, so Mars is in. Okay, so Nisia gets melted. Stinks does no shot, which you need to be matrixing your hamster if you guys are going to be engaging on this. So that shouldn't happen. Um, I'm assuming you were matrixing the Bastion, hoping for the best. Um, I was probably doing it a little early as well. Yeah, so we need to make sure we're matrixing either the Bastion or the hamster, whatever is going to get eaten, so that he can get a clean engage and not die immediately. Um, but that's okay. You guys kill them immediately. Mercy, mercy. The call is mercy. And I feel like he's going to try to clean up this May, which is a bad call. No, I don't. So then he goes after a baby diva, which I hate. I hate people that do this because baby diva is not a big deal in the middle of a fight, right? You're like, uh, you can leave them. They're not going to have really, really minimal impact. He should have immediately took target switch to mercy after cleaning up that May. Totally agree with cleaning up the May, by the way. But the call was mercy plenty of times, and you need to go clean that up with your team because if they're calling it that much, you should inherently be low, right? So right click dash should be all you need. Um, but she's he goes after this baby diva for really no reason. And it does die, which is great, but the Mercy gets away with the res. That's that's a really, really big big issue. Mercy's dead, they don't have enough healing to really sustain this fight. And it could have been an easy win. Look at their Bastion misplays, it doesn't play off point with this team slowly. It just stays in to die. So it worked out for you guys, but it could have could have been done a little easier. Okay. Good fucking work. Good Discord calls, Dink. Great coordination on the dive. We have Dragon Blade. We try to roll on our Dragon Blade. They won't have shift for us. Try to roll on our Dragon Blade. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slam main. Be ready for it. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, don't, don't poke it. Cause I would. So you guys are gonna have Dragon Blade this fight. They don't have a defensive vault. So anything that you, so what, what I would like to see happen in this fight right here is your Genji's kind of your MVP, right? You don't want him to die. You want him to have the most valuable, most value possible. They're on the Reaper, which is gonna be. Not fun for your little floats comp. Um, I would like to see the Hammond, the Winston, and the Diva all engage backline stuff. Just create a ruckus and then let that Genji get free reign on stuff that's low. That, that's the best thing you can do so that he doesn't get focus fired down as the fight starts. Because that's the last thing you want is them to just hear this Dragon Blade and be able to all look at it. So you want them to be, you want your your tanks to be deep engaged into this. So let's see what happens. No hook. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Slam, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what you were waiting for. Okay, so this is good. And I kind of messed up going for the Mercy. Goes after a hog. Kind of just picked the closest thing. Okay, you guys gotta. You can't hear the comps, but essentially what's happening is you have half people calling Ryan, half people calling Reaper, half people calling Hog. They're, they're changing stuff, right? And here's the issue that I'm seeing, is that everyone's calling out what's in front of them, but they're not changing to go after whatever could be low from their teammates. They're just they're having their one little 1v1s and yelling people's names. You guys need to call something, turn and shoot it. That's the biggest thing, I, that's the biggest communication thing I can give you guys. Don't just yell stuff that's Discord or low. You see something, that's like, you get something low, your team should be coordinated and turn and shoot it. Like, if that means you're giving up on your half health Ryan or Hog, to go do it because you can and melt it, then good. Because that one thing's not going to be able to burn you down super quick, especially as a tank, especially when you're a dive tank at pretty high health. So that's one thing that you guys should really, really work on. No Wraith underneath. Big slam. Yeah, that's when they hooked my bomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they hooked your bomb and probably saved you guys a little bit. I guess that worked out pretty well. Big blade, let's go, poggers. Reaper, 
I just got three misregisters on that reboot. I literally did nothing this entire fucking time. Let's go, dude. Do you guys? You guys are you guys are mad hyped about that, so that's cool. Um. But yeah, you guys need to do a lot better job of actually reacting to the targets that are being said. Because you guys do talk enough, right? But you just, it's 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 kind of like one of the one of the fundamental things is it's it's you listen, and then you have to apply that information, right? So you have to do the application part. You guys are listening, right? But you have to apply the information to actually to your gameplay. So we're going brig here. Uh, this, okay, so here's our comp. It's goats. Straight goats. I'm guessing you're running goats because it's goats. I think that's probably the most of it, for the most part. I think we were expecting them to goats, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so, so we ran the same thing? You don't think... Th I, I would probably be more worried about the pharmacy, but it's fine. Goats works against pharmacy if you play it correctly. Um, I, w I was worried about that as well. Yeah, I'm guessing you guys are committing Moira because you don't, you don't trust your Ryan to really disengage enough to be able to run the Zen, because Zen is better here. Um... Just for the Discord being able to have that secondary uh, defensive ult. I think we talk about it on the way over to the point. Oh, well, I might have skipped it. Nice. Oh, I, can I can grab from <laughs> up there. So. I think we run out of time, so we don't switch to the zone. Gotcha. Farah. So, Farah. So, you guys are going to have to play kind of protected angles. Back, back, back. So Mars play a lot of, uh, do you know if Mars plays a lot of break? It's one of the people that he says he can play in goats, so I think it's the only one. Okay. I was just curious. I don't like I think that. It's like I think it's a default pick. I think. We'll take it. Yeah, that was an over, you guys overextended a ton there. Okay, so, why is your sorry here? Hello? Anyway. Um, okay, so goats is a little wonky when you have a Pharah and a, and a Widow, kind of poaching on all of your stuff right um you don't really want them so much to have the opportunity to really punish you guys very easily you're trying to bring them into you a little bit um especially with these big chokes like this like i'm okay with this but the second you're the second you start like have your your brig start chasing and your zarya and your ryan start getting super low on health you guys don't really have the, the, the ability to heal them up very quickly and then you're providing your because so this is this is this is where your healers are going to get in trouble a lot of the time when your tanks are over aggressive your healers have to get into bad sight lines to keep you guys alive and this is what you're seeing with poor grumpy kitten right here with the widow sniping him in the face right so you guys overextend i think you go after go with the break that mars is doing i think that's my best guess but they have to overextend to keep you guys alive because once again you guys die and they don't they, what are they going to heal the respawn screen so they, they overextend to do it and then you guys are gonna get punished a lot so that's one thing you have to really watch out for it's okay to be like kind of a, a slow moving roll with goats sometimes especially in main chokes so yeah there's that and then that's just an unfortunate slam the fight was over anyway so you probably kind of lucked out that they slammed to be honest with you um if i were you i'd just die on point or go off map well that's unfortunate yes it is um Mars switch to Genji, um, you switch to, yeah. Can I switch to Ana? So the call is to switch to Genji, switch to Monkey, and switch to Ana. You can if you want to, yeah. And we have to deny the high ground to the Widow. Widow first, So we're, we're playing, according to your comms, you're playing around denying high ground to Widow, and then going on to the Mercy afterwards. I'm just keeping you informed. Second, Ana third. Yeah. Then, then going after the widow, going after the mercy if we can, then going out of the on the last is the is the call here. Mars is okay. You guys need to be in these high ground positions. I would like to see you in the window scouting a little bit more. I know that I know that what's his face went over there as hamster, but you guys, I, I would like to see you denying these spaces more as opposed to being with Mars. I don't think you provide a lot of value as Diva up here. Gotcha. In front of you, that's a, that's a situation as well that you just saw. There's a pharmacy outright. You could do a hard engage here. Hard engage on the pharmacy with your with your tank line and your DPS line, um, but sitting on point is kind of the last thing you want to do for the most part. You don't have a ton of mobility, so it's probably what's gonna. You probably should have just engaged here because you have the Anna, remember, and that she has sight lines to work with. But I don't know if we'll see what you guys end up doing. Space me does a good job engaging, kind of gets out. The see if there's a strange thing there. Widow's main lower. Mars follows the call, which is the mercy, or not the mercy, the widow. 
Oh, and Anna. Anna, yeah, nice. Mercy next, yes. So you guys aren't really following the original call, which was the order of things. I know fights don't always work out that way, right? But if you guys are with Mars and a lot of stuff, or one person is, then a lot of stuff gets melted a lot quicker. Um, the last thing you want to do is to try to supercharge Azari and have build and melt apart your, your floats line, which also happens. Um, overall, your engage is just a little, bit, it's a little slow. You know, it's a little, it's a little slow and sloppy, and you guys aren't shooting like you guys are playing like solo queuers, right? Where let's see if we can back up a little bit since it's pre-engage. Um, okay, no, oh, it's just it's still not far enough. Let's go to here. Okay, so you guys are uh, pre-stage is beautiful. This is this is pretty good for the most part. Um, if this is where you guys are gonna kind of hang out with, said pharmacy gets spotted on right. Do you guys decide? So we're going main. So we're, the call is main. Let's see. Said if you push mains, I'll boop. So you guys need to go in. Hold it. Like, uh, there's not a ton of value you're providing up here. I know you're probably poaching, waiting for the fair to come in. But Mew's in. The Sea's coming in, like he said. And then Mars is going to dive the Anna as is kind of his job here. So if you guys all engage that at the same time, Lucio should be kind of in this clusterfuck too. To be honest with you, um, if you guys all do that, that line gets melted. You know, if the pharmacy's outside, what's a Widow going to do against three dive tanks besides look at him angrily and give him some SMG, you know? Um, this is a really easy take that you guys kind of ignore for the most part. So I'd like to see a quicker engage. Just just have some guts, you know? Give it, give it a shot. If you guys get wipes and there's plenty of tip, there's plenty of bar left, you, you have delay tanks already selected. You know, you got time. But you can get a pretty easy team wipe from this. And then notice, cause notice, notice how much damage Mars is doing by himself here. He kills this Widow, which this is a great action shot, by the way. It's a slash. Blink. Gets a Widow. Jumps on the Anna, who deceived boops, you know, which that's a good team shot. Could you imagine if you had a monkey there? Or a D.Va, too? Could you imagine how quick that stuff died? Especially if you're just holding right-click over the Anna so she can't heal. That's one of the bigger parts of goats as well, mind you. Um, that whole team gets melted. They just have a pharmacy left. And that's easy enough for you know you guys to burst down. So, that's how you could turn the tide of that. I don't know if you guys end up losing this fight or not, but it would have made this fight much more easy and manageable. Ooh, uh, ooh, nice. Baby Diva coming to the rescue. I like it. I do like the Baby Diva play up there to wait till last second to try to delay. I do like the May switch. Genji's good. Leave him. Yeah, let him hang out. Okay. I'm guessing you guys ended up retaking this. Oh no! Nap time! That sucks. I'm not really going to comment too much on the on the, um, the retake stuff, for the most part. Um, that can kind of be like a situational thing for the most part. They don't, they don't really have a widow to worry about that someone should be diving. Um, one at a time is the biggest concept that I can teach when you're like really, really trying to stall. That fair is getting a lot of barrages. There we get the big blade. Let's go near him. Big, big, big. Sick grab. Nice. All right, this is gonna look good on the montage later, except for that part. We'll cut that out. Edits will be good. Um. Kill the fair again, baby. Try to get real close and kept splash damaging herself. What's that? The Pharah kept splash damaging herself and because she was used to having the mercy. Mm -hmm. Didn't even care. Yeah, you guys weren't contesting it, so I don't. They would. They shouldn't switch off of it, you know. Are you guys doing? Looks like you guys are doing the floats thing again. I want to say. Um, there's mercy, diva, monkey. Yeah, probably Hammond. Yeah, same thing. They're running a fair defense. It looked like from that. Yeah, yeah running fair defense. Won't do much short uh, dive yeah. is the call. It's good deflect there. They're running standard tank line. Mercy Reaper. The Reaper is going to be tough for you guys. Okay, your Hammond just kind of went in without calling it. That's a big no-no. Um, your team wasn't really staged to dive, and this is going to kind of create a clusterfuck. You guys probably, if you guys engage, it's going to go a little rough. Oh, nice. The Rhino were extended there. This, this is, I'm actually going to use this as a kind of a brief example of what we can do. Um, just, as, just as teams in general, just kind of a overall general note, right? So the one thing I'd like to point out, it's pretty pretty clear. 5v6, right? 
Yeah. 5v6. Be before we dive in. Yeah, main healer's down before anything even happens. You don't have to force this engage if you guys aren't ready for it, right? Well, not you guys, but the uh, the other team doesn't have to force this engage. They can play slow around it. I mean, the best thing in this situation, I mean, you might get some staggers and stuff like that, which would be good. I would like to be aggressive here, but if it's not there, don't force it. You know, you guys can take time with your fights. Like, the, the respawn timer is 10 seconds. Not to mention the 5 to 7 for running back out of spawn to go catch up with a team. If it's not immediately available, wait 3 seconds, heal up, and go again. Wait a couple seconds and go again. The the time for aggression isn't gone, right? So you see, you see Jack here, right? He plays slow and denies you guys any kind of damage while you guys, like, they melt that hamster back there. And then guess what? You guys are probably still fighting in choke. Hamster's dead. 4v6. Now they can turn their entire team towards you. Melt your guys' yeah. four. If the if the hamster and the mercy staggered out, there's two more. He doesn't have to immediately engage here. So he swung way too long. I'll tell you that right now. Um, considering the situation, he could have been a lot more passive. And that's something that I would like to see in general with the kind of OCC players as a whole. Is that they don't need to force the fight when it's not there. Right? So granted it worked out for him, but he kind of left the door open a little. You know, for the same effect, essentially. So, but you can yeah. you can see the same thing happen. Those you guys all stayed in choke, you know, and you guys all ended up dying. So that's it's that immediate disengage, and your main healer is dead at the start of the fight, and they haven't committed anything because all you've committed is cooldowns. And if you're down on cooldowns and main healers, you're done. So that none of this should have happened either. You guys should just just hard disengage or hard died immediately. The call is to try this one more time and switch to hit scan and stuff. Okay, so he called three, two, one on the slam. Didn't didn't mention what he was slamming, which I would have liked to hear um, if he could. I know it's kind of hard to say, like when you're in the air, like what, trying to find targets, but say like he said three, two, one slamming. There's no target called by any of your tanks. That's not okay because they don't know what to shoot. They all land here and they're like, hey, we're tanks, we're here, let's fuck shit up. What are we fucking up? You know, first target. Could have been Reaper. That's kind of what it looks like is right here, or the Rhine turns, you know. Um, maybe Marsh could just go in on the Anna. wouldn't probably be a bad idea to deny them their burst healing, because this Mercy's been attached to this fair the whole time. So maybe Marsh can go on the Anna there, but he's probably going to try to create, like, get, get one or two dashes to really try to level out the HP pool, is my best guess. Yeah, so he's going for raw damage. Good. Got to clean up there. Okay, big blade. Let's go. Montage clip. Let's do it. You guys' comms are good. Your cut response is just not. Uh, sucks. Yeah, if you guys all shoot the same stuff, you win more of these fights. That's just the one thing that you guys need to work on as a team. Your callouts are good. Your, your callouts are good. There's not a lot of like one person one shot and they're not. Not a person half and they're not. You guys call it the right things all the time, but you just don't react to them and, and turn and shoot them. So you just gotta take the action on the words and be fine. Sorry, Discord main. Okay, new peaks, good. Sees Reaper, backs out. Forcing Mercy, Mercy Valk. They do that in response. Not a lot you can do. Yeah, that's. They committed Valk for some reason. You guys are coming trance. Got her. Nice. Okay. I bombed also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are committing fight. I'm guessing you guys are assuming this is your last best shot fight. Yeah. Okay. 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's fine. Reaper's a problem, dude. Reaper's a problem. Yes, he is. Nice. No, no target calls are going on in the middle of this. Thirty seconds in a dream. No ults. You guys can't drive bush. This, this, this is a rough place to be in right now. Wait for Mac. Wait for Mac. Yeah, the calls. Wait for Mac. How much time you have to do that? The hamster can touch, so I would just say the hamster. You have to, that's right. Sign. In these situations, you assign someone to touch, right? And then you have someone that's usually within range as a backup in case they get staggered or something, or they get focused. So like this is where you, like Nasu should be like, "Don't worry, I can touch." You know, then obviously not the diva, but you can be like, you know, take note of that. Be like, "Okay, he's gonna touch. I'll make, I'll make sure I take note of his position and be ready to dive in if I have to." So that's where someone needs to kind of assign the person who should touch. Also deal with someone who, for who should stay on cart. You guys need to pre, you guys need to think about this in advance because if you don't. At five seconds, when no one's touching the point, everyone's gonna say, "Oh shit, we have to touch point. I'm gonna go do it." And it's gonna be, it's gonna lower your chances of winning. So you guys need to assign someone touching point in this situation. All right, go. 
You're there alone. You're in there alone. Go, just yeah, go. Yeah, go now. Go now. Okay. Push, push. okay, calls. Dive now, everyone. No target though. <laughs> so that is where I would like to hear your hand and make a call for a, a person to dive. Um, just in general, he just keeps saying, "I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in." I don't know what that means, as, especially as a, someone that's played a lot of off tank um, and a lot of dive in general. I don't know what I'm going in means. It says I'm gonna just hope. Dive into the cluster and hope I don't get focused down and burned immediately, because that's what's going to happen if you guys start playing higher rank teams. Is I'm going to go, you're going to go in. They're like, okay, well, monkey's going in. Let's burn him down in half a second, especially if they're running brig or any kind of CC hero. So something to keep in mind there. Reaper on the right side. Sorry. Reaper no right. Not one target's been called this whole fight. I've heard Reaper no wraith. Just now, your first your first target call came in. Okay. So, overall, there's not really a ton you can do in those kind of last second scramble fights. I'm not going to dive into it too much, but I'd say, as I said, assign that person to, to go in. Then, when you guys are diving, call targets. You know, that, that's really something that you guys got to focus on a lot better. Mars had a really good game for the most part. I've done a couple things I've done fundamentally different. Um, but I would like to see, as I said, a little bit more proactively in a little bit different ways, I guess you could say. Um, all right. Is there anything that you noticed or have questions about? I feel like our comp isn't really flexible. So a lot of the time it's it's a lot of people feeling uncomfortable with the position they're in. Yeah. Or they're just not knowledgeable of the different sidelines of the different roles. Yeah. So like if for example you, you threw Grumpy Kitten on Widow next time, he he wouldn't he'd probably land his shots, but mm -hmm. he wouldn't know where to stand or where he where he should be watching and stuff like that. Yeah. We don't really, we don't really have an overall knowledge mm -hmm. is what it seems like. Yeah. So um, you need to make sure that the people that you have like assigned to playing the heroes for the most part, uh, do have that knowledge and they, and they are kind of aware of the sidelines they can and can't take. I would say almost arguably more important would be to be aware of this enemy sidelines when playing certain characters, like how you're going to play against a widow pharmacy is going to be completely different than if the enemy is running goats, like where you exactly. where, where you can stand away, you can get, a, get away with. So see, that's one of the bigger things you guys have to focus on too. And uh, it also seems like, um, you know, everyone's focused because it was the last fight or whatever. It's overtime, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But we, the the calling targets that you're talking about, not necessarily the focusing, but the calling out of targets. Yes. Doesn't really happen if anyone is stressed and nobody makes the first one. Yeah. I will say that you guys, you guys are really good at target calling when you're when you're in brawls. You guys are good at calling cooldowns and people that are low, people that are Discord, blah blah blah. But yeah, that's, a, that's one thing that you guys are gonna want to do, um, especially you start brawling against teams that do focus fire. If you're running a Genji or a Tracer, they're the people that like come in and finish stuff off a lot of the time. They call it someone calls like oh Zarya 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 half, you know, like the whole team. We may not the whole team, but if you're running like Dive and Genji Diva. And Tracer all look and chase the Zarya, it's gonna die fast, you know. Right. And that's something that you guys are just gonna have to get used to, which is getting ignoring your one v ones that you're into, leaving them and going and chasing something else as a group, and then coming back to it later. It's one thing that you guys could do a lot better as, and you'll you'll notice very quickly that it becomes sort of second nature after a while. But you guys have to be actively aware of it that the calls aren't useless and that they're not there for just free information. They're there for free information and to do something with it. A lot of the time they require actions to be useful, right? May no wall or no ice block. If you're not going to dive in and go after it, then it's like, ends up really not really benefiting you that much. But if your team is like, okay, well this may be giving us problems or no wall, no ice block. Let's go dive them right now while they have no cooldowns. You're going to get a lot more value. So little things like that would benefit you guys a lot, I think. So, you said we call out targets a lot, right? But how do we get everyone to understand which target should be switched to? Like, say there's there's a Reaper and a Zarya and a Mercy, and they're all called low. How do we decide which one needs to back out of their one v one? So that's that's where you that's why okay. So this is where this is where you guys have shot callers a lot of the time, right? And this is where you hear the repeating calls where someone's like Mercy, 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 right? That means everyone yeah. should be turning to repeat calls. So, how do I explain this? Calls that are repeated should be repeated with increasing importance, right? Like, if there's Tracer going around right side, not a big deal, right? I, I, I'm going to take note of it. I'm going to enjoy that information. But if someone's like, Tracer right, Tracer right, Tracer right, that means they're probably actively flanking someone on the right and that you need to do something about it, 
right? So if right. someone's like Mercy Low, Zarya, like you'll hear when I'm playing Widow a lot, I'll be like, you know, Mercy Low, Zarya Low, Blank Low, whatever, you know? But I'm not the one that's in the in the brawl being able to actively do much about it. I'm, I'm hitting my shots and providing information. If I'm playing Ryan, or are being like, Ryan, 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 you know, if they're, if they're discorded and I want to swing away, you know, or if I'm just going to leave the Ryan, let him hit me a couple times, while I go swing at a half held Zarya that's got no personal. You know, you, that, that's where you start wanting to do these repeating calls, and the more they're repeated, should be the increasing importance. Increased volume and importance are how you can tell, as opposed to just having relying on people's judgment. Because relying on people's judgment is the way to have the most scattered results. Because everyone considers situations differently, and what would be the order of, you know, like obviously there's target priority, like the higher rank you go, but kind of around here, it, not everyone's really familiar with target priority. So you, that's where you want your shot caller to be having these repeat calls. You know, where it's like if there's a monkey that's got like a sliver of health and easy and, and no cooldowns, you can you know, start saying monkey, 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 or something like that. And everyone's like, oh shit, well, obviously this thing's super, it need, needs to die, you know, or it's hacked and he's got primal, he's gonna pop it afterwards, something like that. So the repeating callouts are the increased importance. That makes sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. um, for the most part, uh, Nasif is the shot caller, except when he's on DPS, then it's Mew. Mm -hmm. um, she does a pretty good job of calling out what she's swinging at. Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like more calls are made. So that's why everyone ends up in 1v1s. Yeah. Like, she calls one out, and maybe it's low, maybe it's full, but that's the one she's swinging at. Yeah. So, so that's something that she's just going to have to work on for communication style. Um, you have to learn what calls are important. Or like, oh, something that I'll say when I'm in my rank games, I'll say I'm swinging at the Rhine or I'm being aggressive or something. That doesn't mean that everyone needs to burn down this Rhine. If, if I have a request, like I have Shatter, and like, can we focus Rhine Shield? Something like that. But that's not important. I'm going to swing away at him, obviously. Um, but it's not like an urgent call out. Or if, but if I see a Discord orb on a Rhine as Shield's cracked to hell, then yeah, I'll start calling that Rhine like crazy. So it depends on situationally. You know, and the person that's making the calls has to be able to tell the difference. You know, and they're going to make bad calls, and you guys are going to follow it up sometime. It's going to suck. It's not going to work out. That's just kind of the nature of games in general, and anything competitive is sometimes calls don't work out. But it's about maximizing your ability and your potential to have something good happen, right? And you guys are going to have much more success working as a cohesive unit, going after the same things, than doubting if any of the things are going to be right in the first place. Right. And that's kind of what I'm trying. That's kind of the point that I'm trying to get across is that it's not always going to work out, but it's going to work out more often than continually taking one v one fights. So, is there anything else you can think of? Um, not yet. Okay, cool. Well, that's about everything that I have um, for this long ass video. I don't know why Nassif had to give me the longest Hanamura game in fucking history to go over first, but here we are. Um, anyway, so just to wrap it up, uh, so that was Owosa versus Frost in a marathon game. Um, there was a lot to go over, and I hope you guys got some value out of it. If you have any personal questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, Zen's also a good resource uh, for asking some of the more like team-specific stuff. Um, but for the most part, as I said, if you guys have any questions or any situations that you guys want me to go over, um, so I'm accepting VODs, so just feel free to reach out to me, and then I'll go over them when I can. i try to stick to about three a week. Um, but other than that, uh, see you next time.